Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are still doing well, hanging in there. Uh, today we are going to be covering 7.5 exponential and logarithmic equations. Now, just a little brief intro here. If you take a look at it, hey, here's an equation, and it involves an exponent, and there is an x to be solved. Here's another concept. Here's a logarithmic expression, equation, and there is an x to be solved. So we will be using our properties and basic concepts of logarithms to solve these logarithmic and exponential equations. A couple of things you're going to need to have handy to do this. Number one, your scientific calculator. Make sure you got it handy. Uh, Make sure you understand where certain things are, like log, natural log, e to the x, etc. Um, a couple of you asked questions about your particular uh, calculator, where the e to the x function key is. I basically can't answer that question. There's probably 20 to 30 types of calculators in any classes. So you're going to need to Google your particular type of scientific calculator and ask Mr. Google that question. Uh, but get familiar with it, especially the log, natural log, and e to the x function key. Second thing you're going to want to have handy is uh, this basic sheet of logarithmic concepts, uh, logarithmic properties, and this... Uh, uh, translation of logarithmic ex expression to exponential expression. Now all of this is in uh, the very beginning of your 7.4 notes that were on, that have been posted on uh, Quickly Content. So you can run this off. Uh, I have a summary sheet here that I'll be referring to uh, as we work these problems, but we're going to need to refer to these because these are the concepts these are the properties, this is the definition that is going to allow us to work this uh, particular set of problems. Now, I'll just go ahead and tell you, if you find these problems challenging, well, so did I. These are challenging problems that we're going to be working in this section. This is by far and away the most challenging section we'll encounter this semester. Uh, but there are only eight problems. And if you keep some very basic concepts in mind, I think you're going to find you're able to handle it and able to uh, deal with problems like this when we have our test. And for those of you who think ahead, uh, we have this week with this section of problems, 7.5. We have next week with two other sections involving solving systems of linear equations, which is not going to be challenging. And then we're going to have our review and our third test. So we basically have three weeks before the semester is finished and all your grades are available. And I'll have your uh, summary grade once all the Hawks assignments have been finished. All right, so I'm going to keep this guy handy because I'm going to refer to it and when you keep this guy handy, you're going to need it as well. All right, here we go. Let's start with this one. It says, solve the following equation. Express your answer in exact form. Exact form, by the way, is going to involve square roots, uh, logarithms, um, something that hasn't been figured. And this is a and, not an or. Some of the problems are going to be or an exact form and as a decimal approximation rounded to two decimal places. All right, notice what you got here. I've got an exponential expression, very simple, something to a power equals something. This is what I'm gonna be using to deal with that. I'm gonna be taking an exponential expression, something to a power equals something, and I'm gonna change it to a logarithmic expression. This concept works both ways. I can take an exponential expression, make it a logarithmic expression. 
I can start with a logarithmic expression, make it an exponential. So since I have an exponential, I'm going to go from here to here. Notice a to the y equals x. That's the same as log of a. Whatever the base is here is also the base of my log. So if I translated this into exponential, um, in, sorry, into logarithmic expressions, it would be log base 5. Let's see, something to a power equals something. Something to a power equals something. The something is the object of my logarithm. X, X. So the 211 is the object of my log base 5. So log base 5 of 211 equals my exponent x minus 9. All right, uh, notice what you got. Log base 5 of 211. So if you look on your calculator for your log base 5 function key, you'll remember, uh-oh, I don't have one. I have a log base 10. I have a log base e, but I do not have a log base 5. That's when I use something that I forgot to write on my summary sheet here, which is the change of base formula. When I have an inconvenient base, like base 5, base 7, base pi, something for which I have no uh, function key, I can change this into a familiar base, like this. Log base 5 of 211 is the same as, I'm going to use log base 10. I'm going to go ahead and write the log base 10 in there just so we know what I'm talking about here. Log base 10 of 211 over log base 10 of 5. 211, the numerator, my base, my denominator. So you're going to need to use the change of base formula to get from here to here. Now notice, notice this guy, log base 10 of 211. Hey, I can do that on my uh, calculator. Log base 10 of 5, I can do that on my calculator. So these are both convenient logs, log base 10. I could have used log base e and gotten the same ratio, the same answer, in solving for x. All right, first thing I want to do is find the exact form. I want to find out what x is. All right, I'm going to add 9 to both sides, and I'm going to get exactly what x is. x is this over that. plus 9. So that is what x is in exact form. And I will submit this in the big box that asks for the exact form. That's what they want as far as exact form. And they also want a decimal approximation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find log of 211, divide that by log of 5, add 9, and I'm going to round that to two decimal places. It's going to be that simple. I'm going to do log base 10 of 211, that's just simply L-O-G, log 211. Now I'm going to hit equals, so I get the this value, divided by log base 10 of 5 equals. What I get is 3.32529640. Big, big long number. Now I'm going to add 9. Plus 9 equals. And I get 12.3252 something like this. About that. But I wanted to to two decimal places, so I go to the one to one to third decimal place and see if it is five or bigger. It is. That means I round this guy up one. So 12.33 is my approximation. 
In this first problem, Hawks is going to ask for the exact form. That's the exact value right there. And this is the decimal approximation to two decimal places. All right, two things we had to do. Use our transformation of exponent to logarithm, exponent to logarithm here. This is a very inconvenient base, so I use my change of base formula to make it convenient, and then I use my calculator. All right, one down. Let's see what this feller says. Solve the following logarithmic equation. Express in exact form or, and here's where they give you a choice, exact form or as a decimal approximation rounded to four places. If there is no solution, and we'll find some of these guys have no solution, then simply choose the no solution option. All right. Notice what you got here. Log base 6 of something minus log base 6 of something. Before we even look at the right side of the equation. That should ring a bell. Check it out here. Log base 6 of something minus log base 6 of something. If I have a log of something minus log of something. Notice, same base. I can change that to the log of the ratio of these two things that over that. How we wrote this in our notes was the difference of logs equals the log of a quotient. Difference of logs, log of a quotient. Hey, the sum of logs, log of a product. So I multiply these two things. If I'm adding the logs, I divide these two values if I'm subtracting. I am subtracting. So this is the same as log base 6 of that over that. Equals 1. All right. Goodness, did that help us? It's not obvious yet. But here's where we're going to use one of our basic logarithmic concepts. Log base 6 of something equals 1. Hey, that sounds a little bit familiar. Look here. Log base something of itself equals 1. So it will be log base 6 of 6 that equals 1. So since log base 6 of itself is what equals 1. You know what this guy must equal right here? This guy has to equal 6. So here's where I take what I need and leave the rest. All this tells me is that this equals this. So x minus 3 over x plus 2 equals 6. Hey, that looks more familiar, doesn't it? Now I'm going to go ahead and put this over 1 because this is what I want to do. I want to cross multiply. Whenever I have a fraction equals a fraction, I can simply cross multiply. So 6 times x plus 2 is the same as 1 times x minus 3. A little distributive here. 6x plus 12 equals x minus 3. Hey, this is turning into something we did early on, right? Just get the x's on one side. Get the numbers on the other. So I get 5x is negative 15 divided by 5 x equal negative 3. Ta-da! Got it. I thought. But if I submit this to my hawks, I'm going to get a red uh, bar, which means incorrect. 
And here's what, now keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to have the red bar on your test, are you? You're just going to get a wrong answer once you've submitted your test. So this is what you have to keep in mind. Whatever I take a log of, I'm going to write this down. Whatever I take a log of, must be positive. And if you have any doubt about that, uh, let's just do log of negative three equals, uh-oh, domain error. I chose the wrong thing to take a log of. So whatever I take a log of must be positive. So let's go back to our original expression And let's let x be negative 3, so that's negative 3 minus 3. Negative 3 plus 2. And what I get is log base 6 of negative 6 minus log base 6 of negative 1. Uh-oh, I'm taking logs of negative numbers these have no meaning. So my option of x being negative 3 gives me nonsensical expressions. I cannot evaluate log 6 of negative 6 or log 6 of negative 1. So since my one possibility doesn't work, I'm going to choose no solution. So choose no solution. Now let me say this one more time. When you have a problem like this on your test, you're going to get an answer. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy I got an answer. And so I choose the answer, only to find out later that it's incorrect. What you have to do, always substitute it back into your original expression. See if it gives you logs of something positive. Not negative, not zero, something positive. If it doesn't, that possible answer does not work. All right. Again, not an easy problem. But we use the uh, property of concepts, log of a difference. Log of a difference equals the ratio, log of a ratio, log of a quotient. All right. Let's go on. Solve the following logarithmic equation. It looks pretty similar. Express as an exact expression or, so I got my choice here, as a decimal approximation rounded to four decimal places. Again, if no solution, choose no solution. Hey, recognize this, this, this look? Log of something plus log of something. Hmm, looks like this. Log base something of log of something plus log of something, notice the bases are the same, is the same as the log of the product of these two objects. Log of one plus log of the other is log of their product. So log of something plus log of something else, that's the same as the log of their product. All right, let's multiply this out, find out what the product is. That's a Fourier multiplication. So log that's x squared, that's minus 4x plus 1x, that's minus 3x, and that's minus 4. All right, here's where we're gonna use a concept that we haven't written down here, but it should make sense to you because you've seen something like it before. Uh, you remember we had a concept like this before, 
uh, if 2 to the x equals 2 to the seventh, if you had the same base and you knew the exponents were equal, something very similar here. I have log base 5 of something equal log base 5 of something. Hey, same thing, log base 5. Since both sides of the equation are log base 5, then this, the object of the first log, must equal the object of the second log. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 must equal x minus 3. Hey, we're out of the, the logarithmic forest. We're into the algebraic quadratic forest. This is something we're more familiar with. Remember how to solve something like this? Number one, set the guy to zero. Get everything on the left side or on one side where your x squareds are positive. So I'm gonna subtract x and add three to both sides. x squared minus three x minus this x minus four. And I'm gonna add three so I subtracted this x, I added the 3 to both sides. Let's see what we get. It's minus 4x, minus 1 equals 0. All right, so I've set the thing to 0. Got me a quadratic equation. Step 2 was to factor the polynomial. Let's see. What two numbers multiply to give negative 1, add to give negative 4? I don't have to think about this question long before I realize, uh-oh, this guy will not factor. So if it will not factor, I go immediately to the quadratic formula. Remember that feller? x equal negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which means I have to look at this quadratic equation and indicate what a, b, and c are. Remember this? a is the uh, coefficient of x squared. There's nothing there, so it must be a 1. b is the coefficient of x, and c is your constant number. Don't leave your signs off. Negative 4, negative 1. All right, so I'm gonna use the quadratic formula to find out what my x is. x is the opposite of b, so it's gonna be positive four. b squared, now I'm always gonna get a positive number when I square something, so this will always be positive. b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Have I good on that one? So I get positive four, plus or minus. Negative four squared is 16. Now watch this. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative one is plus four. All over two. So I get the four plus or minus the square root of 20 all over two. Now I can express as an exact expression and there it is. There's my exact expression. Four plus square root of 20 over two comma four minus square root of 20 over two I could express it in the exact form, but you know what? If I do express it in the exact form, I will not be being careful to note that whatever I take a log of must be positive. I got some logs here, so whatever goes in these blanks, in these parentheses, must be a positive number. This doesn't right off the bat tell me if x plus 1 is positive, if x minus 4 is positive, etc. So I am going to evaluate these guys to four decimal places using exactly what I've done before. 4 plus square root of 20 
four plus my square root is right there. It's a second square root of 20. I'm going to do that equals. So I've got my numerator here. I'm going to divide by two here equals. And I get uh, to four decimal places. One, two, three, four. I get 4.2361. Oops, 23.61. All right, same thing here. I'm gonna do four minus the square root of 20. Four minus square root of 20. I'm gonna get the equals there before I divide by two. Divide by two equals, I get negative 0.2361. So I got my two answers. Now here's the question. Will both, either, or neither of these guys give me positive values in these parentheses? I gotta check for that. Do either of these values create a log of a negative problem? If so, I have to eliminate them. Let's try 4.2. 4.2 plus one is 5.2, good to go. 4.2 minus 4 is 0.2, still positive. 4.2 minus 3 is 1.2, still positive. This guy's good. Let's try this guy. Negative 0.2. Negative 0.2 plus 1 is going to be positive. Negative 0.2 minus 4, no way. This is going to give me a negative. This guy does not work. So checking to see if there's a log of a negative allows me to see which of these, if either of these values works. And for my only answer, my only solution is 4.2361. Hey, in that other problem, neither, neither one of them worked. We had no solution. In this one, we had two solutions. Only one of them works. Check this out. Do I get a log of a negative? If so, I have to eliminate that value. All right. Let's try these guys. Solve the following logarithmic equation. Express in exact form or as a decimal approximation to four decimal places. No solution, choose no solution. Hey, this looks very uh, familiar, right? Log of something equals log of something. Same base, both of them are log base E. Since I have a log equal to logs, the object of my logs must be equivalent. So I get x minus three equals three x. Again, we're out of, the, out of the realm, out of the world of logarithms into simple x's, minus x minus x. 2x is negative 3, uh, divide by 2, x equals negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. Hey, I got my solution, ta-da! Until I realize I need to ask myself the question, is there a log of a negative because of my solution option? If x is negative 1.5, 3 times negative 1.5 is a negative number, so is negative 1.5 minus 3. Both of these would be logs of negatives. That means this does not work. I have to choose no solution. All right, let's try this one. Log base 3 of something plus log base 3 of something else equal log base 3 of something else. This should look a whole lot like this. Log base 5 of something plus log base 5 of something equal log base 5 of something else. The sum of logs, remember, is the same as the log of their product. Like this guy right here. The sum of logs equals the log of their product product. And that's log base 3 of 2. Alright, let's multiply these guys out. 
x times x is x squared, x times 2, 2x. All right, check what you got here. Log base 3 of something equal log base 3 of something. That means the two somethings must be equivalent. So x squared minus 2x must equal 2. That's got to equal that. Again, we're out of the realm of logs into the realm of quadratics. You know what to do? Same as the last time we encountered a quadratic. Set to zero. Bring the two over and change its sign. Oops. All right. Factor the polynomial. What two numbers multiply to give a negative 2 and add to give a negative 2? Only thing multiplies to give a negative 2 are these two pairs, and neither one of these pairs adds to negative 2, so factoring, sorry, doesn't work. My factoring options don't work. Yeah, sorry, quadratic formula. So A is 1, B is negative 2, C is negative 2. So my X is, again, the opposite of B, minus and minus the square root of B squared, it's always going to be positive, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. Again, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, negative 4 times a negative 2, positive 8. So I get a positive 4 plus a positive 8. So I get 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. Let's see, I may express in exact form or as a decimal approximation rounded to four decimal places. Once again, I don't know if this is going to give me a value that ends up being a log of a negative problem. Can't have that. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to figure these two guys in their decimal form and see what happens. 2 plus... 2 plus square root of 12, square root of 12, equals, so I've got my numerator now, divide by 2, equals, I get 2.7321, rounded to four decimal places. Same thing, 2 minus square root of 12 equals, so I've got my numerator now, divide by 2 equals, I get negative 0 0.7321. So let's see if both, one, or neither of these two solutions gives me a workable answer. Remember, i got to fill it into all these blanks <clears throat> and see if this is an appropriate x. 2.7. 2.7 minus 2 gives me positive 0.7. That works. Positive 2.7. So 2.7 works. How about negative 0.7? Negative 0.7 minus 2 is negative 2.7. So this guy does not work. I only have one solution. My one solution is... 2.7321. Again, I'm warning you, anytime you have a log of something that involves an x, you better try your x's in the original expression. See if it gives you log of a negative. If it does, you have to eliminate that. All right.
try this fella. <clears throat> Solve the logarithmic equation. Lots of logs, log plus log. I think what I know what I'm gonna do here. Express as exact or decimal approximations rounded to four decimal places. Same as the last one. So here we go. Log base five of something plus log base five of something. Hey, there's the sum of logs. Sum of logs equals the log of the product. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Change this sum of logs to a log of the product of my two objects. Everybody get so far? Sum of logs equals the log of the product of my two objects. So I'm going to multiply these guys together and just see what I get. It's x squared. It's plus 5x minus 3x. Plus 5 minus 3 is plus 2x. And then finally, minus 15. All right, does this look familiar? Log base five of something equal log base five of something. The two somethings must be equivalent. So I'm now gonna set them equal to each other. That's a wonderful way to get out of the realm of logs into the realm of quadratic equations where you're more familiar. All right, you know how to solve this guy. Number one, set to zero. 7x over here, 9 over here. Move the 7x and make it minus 7x. Move the positive 9, make it negative 9. Like terms, like terms. All right. Step number two. Step number two hasn't been very much of a friend to us this time, but it still says to give it a shot, try to factor. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give negative 24 and to give a negative five. Now again, this is where some of you guys will want to write down what multiplies to get negative 24. One, negative 24. Negative one, 24. Two, negative 12. Negative 2, 12. 3, negative 8. Negative 3, 8. 4, negative 6. Negative 4, 6. Those are the pairs of numbers that multiply to give negative 24. Does any pair also add to negative 5? Yes, that one right there. Hey, factoring worked this time. So I can break this guy into factors x minus 8 times x plus 3 equals 0. And you remember the next step? We hadn't had to do this because they hadn't factored. But my next step would be set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. You can probably do that in your head. x minus 8 equals 0, x plus 3 is 0. Add 8, got it. Subtract 3, got it. Again, got me two answers. I'm real happy. I'm tempted just to write these guys in, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check to see if I get the log of a negative limitation. If I do, I have to eliminate that particular value. Let's try 8. 8 minus 3, positive 5. 8 plus 5, positive 13. 7 times 8 plus 9, no problem, that's positive. How about negative 3? Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. I'm already finished. Doesn't work. That gives me the log of a negative 6 right there. Doesn't matter if everything else worked. This one doesn't. So negative 3 is eliminated. My only solution... is x equals 
All right. Solve the logarithmic equation, express in exact form, or take your choice as a decimal approximation to four decimal places. Hmm. Looks like we have the log base E of something minus log base E of something. Looks like we have a difference of logs. Difference of logs equals, this is the same as, the log of their quotient. So that's the first property I'm going to apply. This is the natural log of this over that. equals 3. Now, let's see. I don't have log of something equal log of something, so I'm kind of limited there. Hmm. Hey, here's what I do have, though. I do have a logarithmic expression that I can change to an exponential expression. Let's see. This I'm going to go ahead and write this as log base e. You realize that ln, the natural log, is the same as log base e. I'm doing that because I'm going to have to write it in terms of an exponent. And I need a base for that exponent. And now let's look at the, ex, uh, the logarithmic expression. Log base something of something equals something. a to the y equals x. This to that power equals this. This to that power equals that. So translating this to an exponential form, this to that equals this. All right, let's see, what does it say? Express in exact form or as a decimal approximation. Hey, you know what? I can figure what e to the third is. Because you have an e to a power function key on your calculator. That's the one I told you to be able to find. e is just a number, ladies and gentlemen. It's just an irrational number like uh, pi. So I can find e to the third power. So, where's my e to the power? Mine is a second function to the natural log. That's where it will mostly show up e to a power. So, here we go. e to the third power equals. Now, I'm going to write down the full expression of this guy because I'm going to have to round it later on. I get 20.085536. That's as far as my screen will go equals x minus 2 times x. Well, I need to solve for x. One good thing I might do is cross multiply. Da, da. Or you could say multiply both sides by x. Either way, you're going to get x minus 2 times 1 equals x times this big number. So 20 blah, 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 x equals x minus 2. Now I'm trying to get x all by itself. There are more x's over here. I got 20-something x's here, just one x here. So I'm going to subtract 1x. So 20 x's minus 1x gives me 19 blah, blah, blah x's. And that gives me negative 2. To get x by itself, I have to divide both sides by whatever's in front of x. So I'm going to divide negative 2 by 19 point all this stuff and see what I get. Negative 2 
divide 19 point equals. So I get negative to four decimal places, negative point one oh four eight. Uh oh, got a negative. Will I get log of a negative? Will I get that situation? Let's see. Negative point something, negative something, minus two is going to be just a bigger negative number. Yeah, this guy didn't work. Whatever it is, it turns out to be a negative number. Log of a negative number has no meaning, so my, my solution. No solution. Hey, that happens more than we thought it would, huh? Be sure and check to get a log of a negative possibility. If that exists, you have to eliminate that particular value. All right, last one. Solve the following exponential equation express an, as an exact answer and as a decimal approximation to two decimal places. All right. Yeah. And notice this is a little bit different. It's kind of like something to a power equals something, right? Something to a power equals something. Except it's got this nagging 2 there. So the best way to eliminate a 2 as a coefficient is to, to divide both sides by 2. Now I have something to a power it's going to be 62 equals something. I can't take e to the x plus 2 because I don't know what x is. So this is kind of a dead end unless I change this exponential expression into a logarithmic expression. So a to the y equals x. That's log base a of x. Keep something like this handy so you can see how to express an exponential expression in terms of logarithms. So what this is, is log base e of 62 equals x plus 2. Remember what a logarithm is. A logarithm is an exponent. The exponent of e is x plus 2. Now we typically don't write log base e, we write natural log. And good news, I have a function key for natural log. I can find the natural log of a positive number, which I'm going to do even right now. Natural log right there of 62 equals, get a big ugly number. 4.127134. I don't want x plus 2, I just want x. So I subtract 2. And I get 2.127134. Set around to two decimal places. So x is approximately equal to 2.13. Remember again, if I'm rounding to two decimal places, I'll look to the one, two, third decimal place to see if I leave this number alone or round it up. That's five or bigger, I round it up, 2.13. Yeah, all right, pretty good problems, huh? So, uh, good luck working those. Hey, I found a solution, if you guys take note of this, I found a solution for avoiding last-minute problems on Hawks. You ready? Don't wait to the last minute to work these problems. If you're waiting until Sunday night and your calculator goes blank or your uh, internet goes down or something happens, that's when last-minute problems happen in the last minute. So if you'll do these Friday or Saturday, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable when Sunday comes. So good luck to you guys, hang in there, 
stay frosty to the end.